Hi, I'm Shanti, the artist behind Shanti Fine Arts. Today's tutorial is once again with watercolors since this is World Watercolor Month. Today I'm presenting you my painting of the series Buddha and the Bird. If you want to know my concept behind this painting, I have uh, described that in the video description below, so check it out. If you want to see other paintings of the same series, I have linked those in the video description as well. So without much ado, let's get started with this particular tutorial. I started off with the background by loosely blocking in some colors and for the background I just did wet on wet blending. So I made the whole background area wet with water and then just randomly put in some colors. And for the colors I chose kind of blues and purples and browns because I knew I would use a lot of yellow, gold, orange and brown tones for the Buddha face. So I was trying to choose some colors that are kind of contrasting to that and kept it very loose, very hazy, just a very simple background. Once the background was done, I move on to the face. And as usual for watercolors, it is important that you start as light as possible because it is so much easier to build up layers of darkness and depth and add, add additional colors and get the brightness of colors in the later layers than once you, than once you have applied a lot of color already it is very hard to get back to the lighter shades that is the nature of watercolor it is easier to add colors than to subtract colors it, you can do it there are definitely techniques to subtract colors but it is so much easier to add colors in case of watercolor you see that i'm starting off with very light shades of yellow but on the side of the buddha face i'm adding a little bit of blue as well this is because i added a lot of blues and grays in the background and i always feel that there should be some connection with the foreground and the background or rather the subject and the background so i try to bring a little bit of the colors that i've used in the background in the subject itself so that it feels like the subject is a part of the background and the colors are reflecting off the surface of the subject if it makes sense to you so as you can see i'm slowly adding a little bit of yellow color at a time and i'm using predominantly permanent yellow light of a holbein brand holbein is my favorite brand in watercolors because i have seen that um, among all the different kinds of watercolor that i've used so far the brightness that i get out of holbein colors is just amazing it is um, rarely any other brand of watercolor matches the brightness and this particular yellow the permanent yellow light it, it, if you use it like if you dilute it with a lot of water you can have a very light yellow color at the same time if you add a little bit of yellow ochre or red to it or just use it um, straight out of the tube without mixing too much of water then it gives such a bright color just like gold and you will see in the uh, end of uh, as we proceed with the face that how bright that color gets so this is the color i really recommend if you want that gold like look in any painting so you can see i am slowly building up depths adding in browns adding in um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, some amount of reds, a little bit of purples for the shadow area, and a lot of that yellow. It is a very, it is a little, not very, but a little tricky in case of watercolor to build up the layers because unlike oil paints or acrylics which once dry is permanent so when you add additional layers on top of the already existing layers the previous layers do not get reactivated while in case of watercolor each time you apply water all the previous layers get reactivated so the trick is to apply the colors just on top of the other color uh, pre-existing colors what i'm doing here is just dropping off the color pigment or water watered colored pigments on top of the pre-existing layers and you have to use the brush very gently 
do not scrub at all because as soon as you start pushing your brush a little bit into the original layers or the pre-existing layers it will start to lift off so to create additional layers and build up brightness with additional layers it is very important that you use your brush very gently not push at all and just drop off the colors on top also to get this smoothness of the skin the very nice blending it is important that you keep the entire area wet so as long as you are working on the face work in smaller areas and keep the entire area wet so that you get the smoothness by from the wet on wet painting now once you want to create shadows and want, want to create dark lines then you let that layer dry completely and then add the additional layers and build those lines you will see that i am making a few lines here and there but then i'm adding more color and kind of blending it into the background and not just leaving it as outline as i have always mentioned when i'm talk i have talked about portrait painting in pre previous videos it is very important when you're painting realistic and surrealistic a kind of like portraiture it is important that you do not make very broad outlines outlines are good if you're going for a stylized version or an illustrative version or even for different kind of art styles like illustrations or cartoons or manga outlines are very good for those styles but for realism you want to stay away from outlines and create uh, values m put more more emphasis emphasis in creating the values creating the darks and lights and contrast between the darks and lights the contrast is what is going to direct the viewers attention where you want them to look at in your painting so pay very, uh, very good attention to your contrast and values. Darken the darker areas a little bit more than you would see in your reference photos. So hype up the darkness, lighten the lighter areas to create the illusion of light and dark and shadows. And that creates such a dramatic effect in whatever subject you're painting be it landscapes or portraiture or you know surreal stuff um, wildlife whatever you're painting that contrast is what makes your painting pop for the lack of a better word yes pop is what I wanted to say so I'm still keeping on adding additional layers and for the major broader areas like forehead or cheeks or skin wherever i'm making skin you'll see that i'm using the wet on wet blending in the entire area so that there are no harsh lines or no watermarks anywhere however for very dark shadows like underneath the eyebrows or underneath the nose there i am applying color like in a little bit of area and creating harsh lines there now adding some more colors to the hair area both the hair is painted in a certain manner just like as if there are the hair is like beads it kind of represents what curls look like it is a little stylized version not absolutely realistic a little stylized version but that is how uh, traditionally Buddha faces are painted a lot of times however there are different styles of painting Buddha faces this is just one of them and I'm not saying that you have to do it this way there is no right or wrong way to do anything in art whatever your heart pleases is oh, what makes good art at least that is what I my opinion is about art so darkening up some of the shadow areas hyping up the contrast in the throat area you will see that when i'm doing the neck and the throat area i am initially doing a lot of wet on wet blending so when i'm putting on the uh, lines as well they are kind of getting blended into the background which is intended but later i'll come back with a few darker lines to kind of give the impression of uh, wrinkles or folds of skin rather not really wrinkles adding up a little more of the contrast and building the 
up different areas of the face, the shadows, paying more attention where the light source is and thus adjusting the lights and darkness and values and adding shadows here and there before I finish off the Buddha face. Once I finish off the Buddha face, I will go on to the bird face. I, I have added a little bit of description in the uh, in the de video description area what my thought is behind the Buddha and the bird painting. If you are interested, check that out. And if you if it, if it means something to you, let me know in the comments, of course. And obviously, I'd always appreciate if you let me know what you think about the painting, what, what thoughts this painting uh, brings to you, whatever your idea is about the painting. I always like to know what uh, my art what feelings my art generate in my viewers. That is something I would love to know. Now on to the hummingbird. I first started with a dull purple, kind of like a grayish purple color that I got by mixing crimson with cobalt blue. And I started by applying a very light layer of that color. Then I'm working wet on wet in the head area and added some oranges and reds in those areas. Then on the neck area, I first created an outline area with um, the purple color. And while the outline is still wet, I added some crimson on it so that the outline stayed a little bit, but not like real harsh lines. Then I'm adding a lot of purples wet on wet so that some of the lines are remaining, but some of them are going away. So creating the eye by applying a very light layer of purple first. And then I'm going to add additional layers of darker colors, brown and purple to the eye to make it more prominent. At the very end of the painting, you will see that I'll come back and highlight some of the eye area and areas of the bird with a gouache white. I am using Holbein uh, white gouache and uh, if you want to make really opaque white areas or any opaque color with watercolor, gouache is a very good way of doing that. You can also use ink, but with ink, since it is very thin, it is a little diff more difficult to get the opaqueness that gouache allows. So I like to use gouache instead of ink. Onto the body of the bird, started with a very light layer of yellow first. And then I will add multiple layers of oranges and reds and crimsons. By adding and subtracting the amount of mix, or rather the uh, ratio and proportion of yellow and red uh, for the orange, I am getting multiple, kind, multiple different shades of orange. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because that you don't need to have like 50 different colors or 48 set of watercolors um, just to paint different colors. You can paint beautiful colors by mixing different colors. That is the beauty of most kind of paints, acrylic, watercolor, oil paints. I, I believe in working with a very limited palette and understanding your colors and understanding what colors mix together makes what color. It's, it's an experimental thing and it's a great thing to learn as well. The only, um, even in case of oil pastels or color pencils, I have done layering with one layering one color on top of other colors to get a nice blend of colors. That not only adds depth to paintings, but also uh, gets much brighter, beautiful colors than you can get with already pre-mixed store-bought colors. That That is something I personally really like and um, I, I always have taught my students to do that, but it's obviously up to you. If you want to use a lot of different colors, feel free to do so. But they cost a lot too. So if you want it to be cost effective, use a limited palette. You can see how I built up additional multiple layers of different colors, purples and blues and lots of orange, yellow, red, some amount of uh, violets as well. And uh, now you can see I'm adding some gouache and that is the painting.